So is there to be another Primark shortly returned to Warhammer 40k? Let's talk about the possibility of the return of Lion L. Johnson and the teasers that Games Workshop has been dropping to that effect. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today I thought we'd cover the fairly heavy hints that Games Workshop's been dropping that we might be getting a new Primark soon. Something that's been rumoured by various different rumour sites for a while now, but now Games Workshop really is implying that it's going to be a reality, and I feel like we're odds on to get a new Primark miniature for Warhammer 40k within the year. So far in Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop seems to be in the process of slowly reviving the Primarchs one by one. It started with Magnus the Red alongside the Thousand Sons, then Rebute, Gilliman and Mortarion at roughly the same time, now we're getting Angron, and it seems to even up the balance of power just a little bit, we might be getting Lion L. Johnson as well. When a Primarch comes back to Warhammer 40k, it really is quite big news, they're pretty much demigod-like figures in the 40k lore, as well as when Games Workshop does release them, they do seem to be very very popular, Magnus and Mortarion in particular was two of Games Workshop's most popular selling models, despite being really big miniatures that cost quite a bit. Between these two reasons, I feel like it is almost inevitable that Games Workshop is going to be bringing back the vast majority of Primarchs, provided they remain releasing 40k things and in business for long enough. And to be honest, since they brought back Gilliman for the reboot of 8th edition and all the new Primaris Marines, I'm kind of surprised at their restraint to be honest. I almost expected that we'd get a deluge of resurrected Primarchs over the next few years, but so far that hasn't happened. Seems like Games Workshop has enough long-term foresight to maybe release one every so often and make it a big narrative event in the lore. With these important figures returning to 40k, or I guess returning to action in terms of the Demon Primarchs, each time they do that, they do have the opportunity to add a whole load of interest to the game, and I feel like it is a good move not to release them all too quickly. I would say there are positives and negatives to bringing back Primarchs and messing with long-established, really quite powerful lore. I think it is really interesting to see how they interact with the other forces, both in the lore and also on the tabletop. It's the chance to get some really cool models and some new updates for how they're doing since the days of the Heresy, perhaps particularly so for the Demon Primarchs who have all changed a bit. Though I do feel like there are some trade-offs as well, you do risk slightly cheapening some of their demigod-like status in the lore, if there just happen to be another guy who you can put on the table and might get killed by some random unnamed enemy character or foot troopers. In any case, I do think that the return of the Loyalist Primarchs eventually will be inevitable, and while they could basically choose just about any of them in the lore, there's only really two that are completely dead, Sanguinius and Ferris Manus, I feel like their actual choices for who they bring back next are actually kind of limited, only two real choices, either Lehman Russ of the Space Wolves or Lion L. Johnson of the Dark Angels. The reason for that is the popularity in 40k and the support for their armies. Games Workshop have entire established ranges for the Blood Angels, Space Wolves and Dark Angels, these armies are much more widely collected than their Codex chapters like say Salamander's Raven Guard and White Scars, it just doesn't really make sense for them to start anywhere else. Now that Gilliman's out of the way as pretty much one of the central Space Marine characters and the author of the Codex Astartes himself, I feel like the Lion or Ross are the most likely. On top of that, they're perhaps some of the easiest ones to justify bringing back in the lore as well. The Lion, as we'll mention, is literally just asleep on the rock, and Lehman Russ went out on crusade with a band of brothers, thought to be lost within the warp, though as no one knows what happened to him, so again could be very easy to justify with a bit of backstory writing. Otherwise, for the other Primarchs, and say Sanguinius is perhaps one of the most popular ones, but he's also unfortunately dead, famously killed by Horus before the Emperor fought him, if they kind of bring Sanguinius back, it's going to be a somewhat supernatural manifestation similar to the Sanguinor, I think. But otherwise, they could justify most of the rest. Vulcan as a perpetual, even if he was basically caught in a massive explosion in the War of the Beast, his law is just that he doesn't die, so he'd be reasonable. Corvus Corax got a bit shadowy and went off to fight Lorgar in the Eye of Terror. No confirmed death for him. Jagatai Khan went off into the webway in the pursuit of Eldar pirates, I believe and Rogal Dawn got attacked by a Black Legion, certainly lost his hand, but again with no body recovered, we don't know what happened. Still though, out of all of these, Lion L. Johnson really is by far the easiest to bring back in the lore, to the point where the way that they've written it, it seems a bit strange that he hasn't turned up already. In one of the previous Dark Angels codexes, they basically confirmed that he is basically well and in stasis on the rock. His final closing blows in the Horus Heresy were fighting against the treacherous Luther. They were both cast into the warp, they returned to real space shortly after, Luther was captured by the Dark Angels and sent to a cell for interrogation and things. The Lion himself was basically carried off by the Watchers in the Dark to a stasis cell somewhere on the rock, 
hidden deeply, his existence not known to anyone, even the chapter masters of the Dark Angels, and they even confirmed that the Watchers in the Dark and the Stasis had long since healed his wounds, and he was basically ready to go and get back into action in the moment of utmost need. Apparently, besides the Watchers, only the Emperor himself knows of this, though he's not exactly particularly well known for being communicative these days. With the state of permanent crisis that the 40k galaxy is in at the moment, it is kind of odd that the Lion hasn't woken up to try and do something about it. I guess the fall of Cadia wasn't quite considered important enough, nor was the rock being invaded by an army of demons at one point, but basically whenever the chapter is facing some ultimate peril, the Lion could just pop up and emerge from stasis once more and take the fights to the many enemies of the Emperor. With all that in mind, that brings us to Games Workshop's latest teasers, all of which are in the context of being rumoured for 10th edition by multiple sources. It does seem very likely that we are going to be getting his model sometime later this year. As for the specific hints that Games Workshop has been dropping, it would imply that he might well be coming back at the close of this Arcs of Omen campaign. We've got three major hints so far. The Arcs of Omen tarot card that they gave for Astartes. This was the culmination one in their series of those, so it looks like it will be the last act. And the tarot card itself just happens to show a green-robed angel, or very much things that are associated with the Dark Angels, and above his head he wields a broken blade. The broken blade does look like it's a very deliberate choice. They could have given him a full blade if they wanted to, and that would be a lot more normal, and it looks like it's a subtle reference to the Lion Sword, a relic blade of the Dark Angels that was supposedly carried by the Lion, broken in antiquity in the Horus Heresy, and is now supposedly carried by the Dark Angel Renegade Cypher. He carries it slung on his back, who apparently seeks to reforge it and present it to the Emperor in penitence for the Fallen. It will be interesting to see that if the Lion really does come back, how that might bear on the entire Cypher story, or whether he's just going to continue being an enigma unto himself despite the Dark Angel's story progression. The other really quite major hint was the prophecy in the Arcs of Omen that we did talk about in a video last week. This one's a prophecy in the Arcs of Omen Abaddon book that's all a little bit vague and cryptic, it basically talks about Abaddon receiving a key artifact that unlocks some sort of ultimate power, Angron turning up and presumably breaking stuff at some stage, and there's also a couple of lines that seem very, very dark angels. An ancient knight kneels upon his field of victory and weeps amber tears, and a line saying, I see a circle within a circle within a circle, inward and inward, until their hearts nothing. The knight line certainly fits very well with the dark angels, they're basically warrior knights in space as their general motif, and there aren't really any knights more ancient than the Primarchs. Then with the line about circles, basically dark angels are well associated with multiple circles of secrecy, they have their inner circle deathwing terminators, and they get more and more knowledge as their chapters disturbing past, as they progress further up the ranks, and are more trusted to be able to handle the secrets, and pursue the hunt for the fallen with more clarity. One of the ultimate secrets of the dark angels was that Luther was imprisoned on the rock, that was one of the greatest secrets, though now he has escaped, I guess in the heart of it meaning nothing could potentially mean that I guess but I feel like in the context of these lion teasers, it could mean that they find the cell within the rock, and then Lionel Johnson happens to be missing from it. Finally, just to doubly confirm that the action will be going to the Home of the Dark Angels, we've got that leaks page called The Rock Besieged from the Vashtor book of the Arcs of Omen series. It does mean that we will be visiting the rock, and presumably Demons, Black Legion, and Vashtor himself will be getting it all inside it. Maybe they're searching for one of these key fragments that they want to unlock to build their super weapon. I feel like if anyone's going to be able to sniff out some secrets that the Dark Angels don't know about, Vashtor himself, with his knowledge of ancient technology and things, might be able to spot some suspect status things. I do feel like a new Chaos God Ascendant trying to rip secrets out of the rock is probably about as good an alarm call as ever for Lionel Johnson to turn off again, but he has admittedly been pretty sleepy before. In terms of release, though, it does seem like it could be really quite an interesting way to end 9th edition and kick off 10th, if that is indeed what they're going for. Release-wise, I guess he'd be a similar sort of scale model to Gilliman, perhaps a little bit bigger than his Horus Heresy model, perhaps, and I guess would be towering over his fellow Dark Angels pretty significantly, as Gilliman does at the moment. Timing-wise, within the edition, it does seem to shadow Gilliman's release pretty well. He came at the end of the Fall of Cadia sequence and the Gathering Storm books, so that would be a good timing analogue for the Lion. And in terms of pricing, it does seem at least fairly likely that the Lion will be sort of similar to Gilliman, £40, $65 or €55, Euros. though seeing as there has been a fair bit of inflation since Gilliman was released, I wouldn't be too surprised if Games Workshop charged higher. Plus, of course, they are known to like money. It'd be pretty interesting for Lord of Elements as well, Gilliman versus L. Johnson's authority within the Imperium, in theory being equal brothers, but I'm not sure I could see Gilliman ceding authority for Lord Commander of the Imperium too easily. It'd be interesting whether or not he could take a commanding role within the Imperium Nihilus, though Dante is already in that role at the moment. 
and there's potential for other development with the Dark Angels narrative, whether or not the secrets of the Dark Angels come to light, or whether there might be some progression with a Cypher storyline, such as giving Mr. Lion his sword back. All pretty interesting stuff, though. I feel like if all of this is accurate, and Games Workshop do bring his model back, I'm sure it would be very, very popular, both with Dark Angels players and just model collectors in general. Let me know your thoughts, though. Should Games Workshop bring back the Lion? How likely do you think it is based on these teasers, and what do you think that the fallout of the storyline will be? If you've enjoyed the video and would like to keep up with Games Workshop's news and rumours, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, but we'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. Finally, if you've enjoyed the video, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description if you're interested in helping support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.